Okay, I'm going to show you an example of finding expected value, and this is six, number six from those exercises that I was just doing before. And when you're finding expected value, basically you need to multiply each probability times the amount of money you would win. And so the probability that you're given first is that uh, probability is 0.1, and you would win $5. The second one in this game is uh, 0.1 and you would win $3. And then the next one is 0.2 and you would win $2. And um, you, the other option is that you win no money. So if I was going to put that in here, since it's zero, it's not really going to affect this. But I win $0.00. And to find this probability, remember all probabilities um, in one event need to add up to be 1. So 0.1 plus 0.1 plus 0.2 is 0.4. 1 minus 0.4 is 0.6. So in order for this to add up to be 1, this needs to be 0.6. But this just multiplies to be 0, so it's really not going to change the problem. And then, again, to find expected um, uh, value, we're going to subtract the amount it costs to play the game, which is $2. So first thing we'll do all of this math right here. I'm kind of not going to put this in because that's just 0, so that goes away. Multiply 0 0.1 times 5 plus 0 0.1 times 3 plus 0 0.2 times 2, and you should get 1.2 on your calculator, and then you're going to subtract the amount it took to play the game. When you subtract, you're going to get negative 0 0.80. What this means is that you're losing... 80 cents per game. Okay, the other one I want to show you is 9, and this is actually a 95% confidence interval. So when you're using this, you need to use the formula that says P minus 2 times the square root of P times 1 minus P divided by your um, um, N. And this is going to give you the range. And then you also have to add the 2, right? So you kind of looked at both of these separately. I'm just writing it as 1. So let me find the problem to show you. So 9A said you have a sample size of 500, that's your end, and the poll finds 37% in favor. Use the formula for the standard deviation of the sampling distribution to construct a 95% confidence interval. So when doing that, you can do it um, piece by piece. So I'm just instead writing it out all at once. So this is the formula that you would use. And it basically took that piece that it told us, this 2 times the square root of p, 1 minus p, n, where you have to add and subtract it to your per, um, percentage you started with. And I just wrote it out. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now, you had your p as 37%. And this is where you need to be careful. You either need to decide. Um, that you're going to make this a decimal so that when I subtract from 1 it's going to work. Otherwise, if you're going to leave it as a percent, this 1 needs to become 100. So either convert it as a decimal and use a 1 or if you're going to use 37%, make this 1 100. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and um, plug this in. So it's saying 0.37 minus 2 times the square root a 0.37 times 1 minus 0.37 divided by our sample size which was 500 and this is going to give me my 95% confidence interval so I'm going to do 0.37 plus 2 times um, 0.37 again 1 minus 0.37 the only thing difference here remember that these are going to be the same numbers at the end I'm just going to be adding it and subtracting it. So you don't have to do this on your calculator twice. I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so we need to solve this. So the first thing I want to deal with is this right here. So I'll get out 
Um, this is a pretty basic calculator on here, but I'll get it out. And there it is. So I'm going to do, first I'm going to do the 1 minus 0.37. Multiply that by 0.37. Divide by 500. And you have to because this is a basic calculator, so my order of operations is a little bit different. And then I'm going to take the square root. Okay, and then the last thing we need to do, that's the, on the radical sign. It, it says multiply by 2. Okay, so I have point, point, oops. Get, make this blue. 0.37 minus, and I just lost what that was. Hold on one sec. 0 0.04318 and so you you don't want to round a whole lot till the very end just to make sure your answer is accurate so I'm going to go ahead and write um, minus 0 0.04318 and then for my interval then I'm going to have 0.37 and remember we, we already did all this math so I don't need to do it again I just need to instead of subtract it from my 0.37 I need to add it. Okay, so over here when you subtract, and I can show you on the calculator, um, 0.3, oops, hit the calculator, 0.37 minus 0 0.04318, and we get 0.32682, and oops, and then over here when I add, 0.37 plus 0 0.04318, we get 0 0.41318. Okay, so now I want to convert these to percentages because these are decimals. So this would be, um, I'm going to round to two decimal places. So move the decimal two places over to make it a percent, two places to the right, and I get 32.68, and then over here, move it two places over, I get 41.3, I have to round, since that's an 8, the 1 up to a 2. Okay, and that is our answer.